Today on the bench we have this duplexer. It's a Veronach duplexer from TXRX Systems and it's designed for the 1.2 GHz amateur radio frequency band. Now for those outside of the radio world may not know what this is, a duplexer is a pair of filters that allow a repeater system to use the same antenna on different frequencies for transmitting and receiving. Well, a repeater will operate on a pair of frequencies. You have one frequency to transmit on, one to receive on. And in the 1.2 gigahertz uh, frequency range, the transmit is done on the higher end of the t frequency pair, receiving on the lower end of the frequency pair. Now, while it might look like there are just four filters here, there's actually eight. The large cans are bandpass filters. And then these smaller little rect uh, rectangular blocks are the adjustments for notch filters. So in this case, on the transmit side, the bandpass filters are tuned to pass the frequency that we want to transmit on. And then the notch filters are designed to notch out the frequency that we're receiving on. Of course, on the low frequency side, in this case the receive side, it's just the opposite. The bandpass filters are designed to pass the, the signal that we want to pass to the receiver. And then the notch filters are designed to notch out our transmit frequency. And of course, this is what allows the repeater to transmit relatively high power on its transmit frequency while simultaneously receiving on its receive frequency through the same antenna. Okay, so why is this duplexer here? Well, it belongs to a friend of mine, and he wants it retuned to a different pair of operating frequencies. So I thought we'd take the opportunity to see how well we could retune this uh, duplexer with the Nano VNA V2 Plus 4. This is a very inexpensive VNA, and I want to see how good we can get. After we finish tuning it, we'll double check our result with a more professional VNA to see how close we got with the inexpensive Nano VNA. Now, in order to characterize the filter, we really only need two traces. We need S11 to look at the return loss of the bandpass filter, and then S21 to look at the depth and position of the notch for the notch filters. Okay, so let's uh, turn off the traces we don't want. We can uh, turn off uh, trace number two, which is the Smith chart display, and we can also turn off trace number three. And now we're left with the log mag of S11, which will allow us to see the return loss of the bandpass filters, and then the log magnitude of S21, which will allow us to look at the insertion loss or the notch filters. Right, next, we can go down to format. We, these we're just going to leave alone. The log magnitude for trace one and two, we can leave those alone. And next, we'll go down to scale. Now, I've done some experiments here before, and the notch filters are going to need a little bit more scale here. So what I'm going to do is go back to uh, the trace number one, make that my active trace, and then go back to scale and scale per division. I'm going to change this to 15 uh, dB per division instead of 10. So the vertical scale here will be 15 dB per division for the S21, but still 10 dB per division for the S11. And let's go set up the stimulus. So I'm going to set a start frequency of 1000 250 megahertz and then we'll set up the stop frequency at 1300 megahertz. So that should cover the operating frequency range for this duplexer. So with the stimulus set up properly, I want to do one more thing. I want to configure the sweep instead of 101 points, I want to get 201 points to get a little bit finer resolution on the display. So I'll set sweep points. This firmware allows me to go up to 201 points. So now I have that set up. Now all we need to do is go in and run a calibration. So in the calibration menu, we start by hitting reset to clear out the current calibration that's, being, that's in there, and then hit calibrate. And we'll first start off by calibrating with the open. So we'll take our open and connect it up to port one. Some VNAs call this, the nano VNAs call this port zero, but I call it port one because that's more appropriate. And hit open. And now with the checkbox there, the open cal is done. Next we'll calibrate the short and touch short. And now we'll calibrate with the load and touch load. Okay, so the next step is just to do the final calibration of a through. So I'm just going to disconnect my load and connect up uh, two ends of my uh, SMA cable to create the through connection and touch through. Okay, with that done, we'll hit done. And I'm going to save this into slot number six, so I try to remember where it is. 
Now the filter is passive, bi-directional, so it really doesn't matter which direction we hook up the VNA. So I'm going to take uh, the source port and connect it to uh, the antenna port. And I'm going to take now the uh, receive port, uh, or transmission port of the VNA, and connect it up, in this case, first to the high side or transmit side. Okay, so let's see uh, where the high side or transmit side of this duplexer is currently tuned. Uh, so if we look at um, the cyan trace here is actually my S21. So I can actually see the notch filter uh, sitting right here and the, pan the bandpass sitting over here. So that's the high side frequency, this is the low side frequency. Uh, we can drag this marker over and go take a look at uh, where things are. It would be easier to move it with the little push buttons here. So if we take a look at you know about the center of this filter as seen uh, here in the S21, we're looking at about 1272.25. It's most likely 1272.5 because that's kind of a standard a repeater frequency. So that's probably where that uh, is intended to be tuned. Uh, and in most cases, the 1290 or 1200 uh, megahertz repeaters have got a, a 12 megahertz offset. So I'd expect the high side to be 12 megahertz higher than this, or 1284.5. So let's move that marker up to there. And yeah, that indeed looks like it's about the center of the high side. So let's take a look at the low side of the, of the duplexer. And I'd expect that this notch will appear over here, and the bandpass will appear over here. Okay, so now I've moved the termination from the low side of the duplexer over to the high side, and then moved my uh, receive port over to the low side. And indeed, we can see that now the bandpass filter is centered, uh, looks again, 12, 1272.5 is likely where that is. It looks like it's a little bit on the low side. And now the notch is uh, where we were looking at the transmit side before, 1284.5. And we can see that that notch is probably about at the limit of what we can see with this this nano VNA, you know, 80 to 90 dB down. If we put some averaging on, we may be able to get that set to settle a little bit more, but I think this is good enough for now. So we know that this uh, duplexer is tuned to 1284.5 and 1272.5 megahertz. So as it turns out, my friend wants the uh, transmit receive pair to be uh, at 1284.5 and he wants a 20 megahertz offset instead of the 12. So it means that the other side, the receive side, we want to be at 1264.5. So we really only have to move the, the one bandpass filter down and then the, and the no, one notch filter down instead of moving both. So we'll tweak up uh, the other two, but we really are going to be concentrating on moving the low side down to 1264.5. Now the general process for tuning these types of duplexers is to first tune the bandpass filters and then after you've got those optimized then go ahead and tune the notch filters. Uh, the bandpass filters are tuned by loosening these lock nuts and just adjusting this plunger up or down and that will adjust the pass band characteristics of these big cans. So the notch filters are tuned by essentially removing a little rubber plug on the side of these little boxes and adjusting with a non-metallic tool. So we're going to have to tune the low-pass bandpass filters for the receive side to move them down about 8 megahertz from where they are. And then we'll have to tune the notch filters on the transmit side to that same 1264.5 megahertz. Okay, so I've loosened up the lock nuts on the plungers and I've moved my markers on the uh, Nano VNA to uh, 1264.5 which is my new target frequency for the bandpass for the uh, receive side. Now we could uh, disconnect these other cables and, uh, and just tune one cavity at a time but I think we'll do okay by just adjusting each one a little bit at a time and uh, start moving that uh, bandpass characteristic over. Now these bandpass characteristics will move down in frequency as we push the plunger down. So I move this plunger down a little bit, we'll see how that filter moved. It don't have to move much. If I push this plunger down, we'll see if we can kind of line it up on top of that one. Oh, looks like I went a little bit too far with both of them. So this is just going to be an iterative process moving back and forth until I get that bandpass filter where I want it. So now we're getting close. 
uh, what we want to really be looking at is not so much the S21 bandpass characteristics, but we want to look at the S11 because that's going to give us a much sharper indication of when we've got both these uh, cavities tuned uh, right on top of each other. The deeper we can make this notch on S11, the better. That means uh, the lower SWR and effectively the lower return loss for that filter. So we just need to, again, very slightly tweak these things to try to get those filters lined right on top of each other. Let's move that down a little bit. Sometimes tapping on them just to move them ever so slightly will get you kind of where you want to go. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. It's interesting that uh, I get these two little you know, peaks down at the bottom, but I, I can't really kind of get them to line up on top of each other. Uh, when I do, it's kind of off-center, so that might be as good as we can get, but, uh, but let's leave it at this for now. I think we're, we're pretty darn close with that filter. I'm going to lock those uh, nuts down and we'll concentrate on looking at the uh, notch filters. Okay, so I've moved the uh, receive port of the VNA over to the transmit side here. We'll pull out these two little rubber plugs and then adjust each of these notch filters to move that notch down to 1264.5. Okay, and using a non-metallic uh, screwdriver here, we'll go in and start seeing if we can tweak these notch filters. Alright, that one's moving down here nicely. And we'll position that one notch right where the marker is. A little bit too far. Okay, now we'll move over to the other notch and pull that notch in to that side. Alright, it looks like we've got that pretty darn close there. Okay, so it looks like we're about 18 dB return loss on the passbang filters, and we're in the neighborhood of uh, oh, 80 to 90 dB or so down on the notch filter. So I swapped the cables back over to the receive side or low pass side. I want to take a look to see where those uh, notch filters wound up. And it looks like the process of tuning those passbang characteristics has also moved the notch. So we need to now move that notch filter here back up to where this marker is at 1284.5. So I've removed the plugs for those notch filters. We'll take our little non-metallic ceramic screwdriver and see if we can tweak those notch filters back up to 1284.5. Okay, we turn one of them up. And that's getting in there nicely. Let's see if we can get the other one. And move the other one up there. I think we did pretty good there. And we're sitting about that uh, 85 dB or so down here. Let's put some averaging on to see how well that worked. It looks like I might be able to move them in ever so slightly more. So next I'm going to use this Tektronix TTR506A VNA to see how well we did with the Nano VNA V2 Plus 4. Okay, looking at the uh, transmit side first, it uh, looks like uh, our notch is down around... Uh, a little bit better than 100 dB down, so we actually did pretty good with uh, fine-tuning uh, the notch at the new uh, receive frequency of 1264.5. Let's uh, switch to the other trace here. And it looks like we're about, oh, let's see, tra marker 3, about 18 dB return loss. It's about a dB different from what I saw before, but that's not too bad. Uh, I'm not sure if we could make that any better or not, but uh, that looks pretty good. So let's switch the cables over and look at the low side. Okay, looking at the low side, again, we're about 17 dB down or so on the, uh, let's see, actually we want to look at the passband over here. So oh, about 13 or 14 dB down. Might be able to do a little bit better than that. And the notch, let's switch over to that trace. So it looks like that's about 82, 84 dB down. It looks like that could be tweaked a little bit as well. So, uh, if we spend a little more time on the Nano, I bet we'd get uh, really close, but uh, maybe I'll tweak this up a little bit with, uh, with this VNA setup, and we should call it good to go. Okay, a little minor tweaking on those uh, notch filters on the receive path, and we're able to get that notch down to a little bit better than 100 dB. So again, really close to what I had with the Nano VNA V2 Plus 4, and I think if we spent just a little more time with it, we could probably get it just as good. 
All right, so I hope you enjoyed this little view of uh, this uh, UHF duplexer and uh, retuning it with this Nano VNA uh, V2 Plus 4 and then double checking and fine tuning the results over here with a more professional uh, tech uh, TTR506. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And be sure to ring that bell that's right down there in the lower right corner of the video to get uh, an email notification when I post a new one. Uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.